Hello, and welcome to the New York State Archives webinar module series on record scheduling, a family of short presentations providing overviews of topics related to retention and disposition of government records. This module's topic is Introduction to Retention Schedules. My name is Arthur Siegel, and I will be your presenter. The roadmap for today is as follows. We'll go over some basic records management definitions, including what a retention schedule is and why retention and disposition are important. This includes administrative and fiscal considerations, as well as compliance with state records laws. Proper records management is critical to the functioning of any state agency or local government, and the retention schedule is central to this. Subsequent webinars in this series will provide substantive details about the development and use of retention schedules, records disposition, and appraisal. But first, let's start off with some basics. What are records? A record is a recorded piece of information in any format that is created or received by an agency or government in connection with the transaction of public business and retained as evidence of agency functions, operations, decisions, or activities. Some examples of records that you might commonly encounter are board meeting minutes, invoices and other records documenting financial transactions, planning and other reports, business-related correspondence, or personnel files. All of these have distinct business-related functions. On the other hand, Non-records might include library materials, such as books, journals, and other publications that are not produced by the agency or government as part of official business, personal notes in most drafts, and duplicates, also known as convenience copies, because you retain them for your own convenience and dispose of them when no longer needed. Keep in mind that non-records are not scheduled and can be disposed of at your discretion. A group of similar or related records that you normally use and file as a coherent unit is called a record series. An example of a record series might be purchase or accounts payable records. While a single purchase order is a record, a file of multiple purchase orders included with similar records such as vendor invoices, vouchers, and requisition logs would be considered a record series. Other examples of record series might include routine administrative and operational plans, employee attendance and leave records, or facility maintenance work order files and logs. Records within a single series usually have the same retention requirements. For example, toxic substance exposure records, which might include environmental monitoring data, biological monitoring records, material safety data sheets, employee exposure records, and related records. These can all be disposed of after 30 years. However, it is not always the case that records in a single series have a common retention period. For instance, litigation case files can consist of varied records filed cohesively as a unit, but with widely varying retentions that may depend upon the possibility of future legal action, administrative reference needs, or even long-term research value. Thus, some records in a series like this could be kept for as little as four months, while others might need to be retained permanently in the state archives. Records also have a life cycle. It starts with records creation, which is when you receive or generate information. This is followed by the active phase, which is when you refer to records regularly, and these records are generally maintained in office space. Next is the inactive phase, during which you no longer use records frequently, but cannot destroy them. During this phase, records are usually placed in storage. Finally, there is disposition, where you either destroy records that no longer have any administrative, fiscal, legal, or research value, or keep records permanently that do have such value. State agencies will transfer them to the state archives, and local governments will maintain them permanently on their own. Good management during the inactive phase helps ensure proper disposition of records, 
and it is during these last two periods of the record's life cycle that retention schedules become of critical importance. So what is a retention schedule? It is essentially several things. First and foremost, it is a plan of action devised to help you dispose of obsolete inactive records in a timely and consistent fashion by providing a minimum retention period and indicating what will happen to records once that retention period has expired. As such, it is also a statement on the value of records by documenting when records are no longer needed for administrative, legal, or financial reasons, and indicating whether records have long-term archival value or can be destroyed. A schedule is a plan for how records will be managed. State agencies and local governments can use the retention period to inform how best to manage their records. For example, one might provide tighter environmental controls for records that have been scheduled for a 50-year retention versus those that can be destroyed after only three years. Or perhaps you may wish to microfilm records with a long-term retention rather than keep them in paper. Finally, a retention schedule is a legal authorization for the disposition of records, meaning that without an approved retention schedule in place, records cannot be legally destroyed. Also, keep in mind that the retention schedule is media neutral, meaning that it applies to records in any format, whether paper, electronic, or microfilm. At the same time, there are also several things a schedule does not do. It does not mandate destruction, meaning that you are not legally bound to destroy records once the approved retention period on your schedule has expired. However, there are very good reasons to regularly implement and follow the schedule to ensure the efficient and effective functioning of your agency or government, which we will discuss shortly. There are also some instances, such as legal proceedings or audits, where disposition needs to be temporarily suspended. State archive schedules do not address all records management issues, such as record storage, conversion, or access, nor does it address all records. Retention and disposition are just one piece of the larger records management puzzle. For example, court records are subject to the authority of the Office of Court Administration. General election records are subject to the County Board of Election schedule. And vital records such as birth, marriage, and death records are subject to State Department of Health retention rules. And remember, retention schedules apply to the official copy of the record only. Duplicates are just that duplicate copies, which are considered non-records and as such are not subject to retention schedules. These can be destroyed when no longer needed. Now that we have a sense of what retention schedules are and are not, let's examine some of the reasons why a schedule is so important. Routinely adhering to your retention schedules will make your work easier and allow you to devote finite resources just to the records you need to maintain. First, it saves resources by reducing or eliminating unnecessary storage costs, use of staff time, and filing equipment and supplies. As the volume of records increases, your agency will have to invest in additional storage equipment and develop new space for record storage. This can be minimized by ensuring that schedules are up to date and are being properly followed. This goes for electronic records as well, for it is a fallacy that electronic records don't cost money and don't take up space. While storage and access issues are different for electronic records, left unchecked and unmanaged, electronic records can result in significant headaches and costs. Second, the schedule improves records retrieval by reducing the bulk of the records and leaving only those records that you may need. The biggest cost here in not following your schedules will be in personnel time. As more records accumulate in both active office and inactive storage areas, it will take staff more and more time to find the information they need in a never-ending sea of records. Third, a schedule helps identify archival records, so you can provide better protection for these important records against inadvertent disposal or take additional care in their storage. 
and use during their active and inactive phases. Statistics vary, but we often say that only about 3 to 5 percent of government records are ever deemed permanent, which means that 95 percent of your records likely have a fixed lifespan. Fourth, a schedule provides guidance on records disposition. By supporting the consistent destruction of records that are no longer needed, it eliminates ad hoc decisions. And finally, a schedule meets basic fiscal, administrative, and legal requirements. What are those legal requirements? First, retention schedules meet requirements spelled out in New York state laws and regulations. Arts and Cultural Affairs Law, as well as the regulations of the Commissioner of Education, state that no agency or local government can destroy records without an archive approved retention schedule. The Commissioner's regulations further charge the state archives with assisting agencies in developing schedules and giving authorization to agencies and local governments for using retention schedules. So in order to legally destroy records, an approved schedule needs to be in place. For local governments, this is the LGS-1, and for state agencies, it is the state general schedule as well as agency-specific schedules. We will discuss these in more detail in upcoming webinars. The Commissioner of Education's regulations also specifically address the retention and disposition of electronic records by ensuring that electronic records are part of retention and disposition schedules, that they are fully accessible and usable for their full retention period, that proper documentation for permanent records is developed, maintained, and updated. Examples of information included in the documentation are all technical characteristics, contents of the files and records, and restrictions on access and use, among others. The regulations also ensure that preservation copies of permanent records are made regularly and stored in a secure, environmentally stable off-site location. And they ensure that media integrity is maintained and files and records are migrated before they become inaccessible or unreadable. Aside from meeting requirements in law and regulations, there are other legal considerations for having an approved retention schedule in place. Specifically, these will help obviate potential litigation, penalties, and public embarrassment. Retention schedules may also help avoid adverse inference rulings. For example, absent evidence that records were destroyed according to an approved retention schedule, a court could levy sanctions if documents required under a discovery order could not be produced, inferring that the destroyed or missing records were unfavorable evidence which the agency or local government was attempting to hide. This includes the paying of legal expenses and even the rendering of a default judgment against the offending party. Conversely, having a retention schedule that is properly followed serves as a legally satisfactory explanation as to why those documents could not be produced. So, destroying records prematurely or on an ad hoc basis can have serious consequences. By the same token, however, keeping records too long can not only be costly, but can carry certain legal risks as well. There is often a certain level of anxiety associated with destroying records that should be thrown out, even when they had meet their legal retention periods and are obsolete. And we sometimes convince ourselves that these obsolete records might be needed at some indeterminate time in the future. After all, who knows when we might need that purchase order from 1975? But if you do not destroy records in a timely fashion according to an approved retention schedule, they will still be subject to FOIL requests and legal discovery, even though those records may have been authorized for destruction years earlier. Retention schedules are also useful for adhering to FOIL requirements, as agencies and local governments are required to maintain subject matter lists of the records they possess. These lists should have sufficient detail to identify categories of records and the Committee on Open Government has encouraged using retention schedules to maintain these subject lists. So, as we have seen, 
Retention schedules are valuable in helping to plan and implement the management of records throughout their life cycle, including how long records need to be retained and whether they have long-term value or can be destroyed. Retention schedules also improve records retrieval, including for FOIL requests, by allowing for the disposal of obsolete records, and this, in turn, helps to reduce storage costs. And finally, retention schedules provide legal authorization for records disposal. Having approved schedules in place and following them consistently can also help to shield governments from various legal risks. Thank you for viewing this webinar. Please check out other retention scheduling modules in the series. If you have any questions about the topics we just covered or anything else related to managing your agency's records, please don't hesitate to contact us at recordsmanagement at nysed.gov. Please also visit our website for more free webinars and resources.